Welcome back to Bob Facts, episode two, and I am here with my co-host. I'm Natalia. All right, today we're going to be talking about Young Dolph, Black Queen. And I like this song a lot because to me, it feels introspective. This is probably one of my favorite songs by him, except for like maybe Major. And um, I like Preach a little bit too, but this is my favorite. What about you? Um, well, I actually don't know too many. So what, what's the song you're familiar with though? I know that song, 100 Shots. That's okay. probably about it. So I guess we could go with that being my favorite. All right. So are you familiar with the album? It's off the Bulletproof album. Oh, not really. But I did hear something about the album. About um, if you read out the songs, like in sequence, that they read a sentence. Right. Let me see. So read that for the people then. Okay. So. This is the Bulletproof album. Right. It says, 100 shots in Charlotte, but I'm bulletproof, so fuck them. That's how I feel, all of them. I'm so real. I pray for my enemies. I'm everything you want to be. Shake my head. Oh, yeah. So that basically just read out one sentence. If it was in a book, you would be able to read it straight across and it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I man. I think that's what I heard. Yeah, that. you know how that go, though, man. We know about that situation. And all of this whole situation is unfortunate, man. But... So, like I say, we're about to get into breaking down um, Black Queen. All right, so if you watched episode one, you already know what's about to happen. She the lip sync queen, so she going to read the lyrics of Black Queen, and I'm going to break them down, and then she going to break down off of what I break down. All right, so Black Queen. Three-tone chain, two-tone watch, two-tone drop. Oh my God, he too hot, he too hot. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's like, he just, he doing, he just talking his business. You know, Dolph, he talk about like money. He talk about getting to the bag. So that's how he had to start it off. Like, let y'all know, like, nigga, hot. I got it. Exactly. <laughs> um, I stashed the million, forgot all about it. I stashed the million, forgot all about it, and let that shit rot. Let this shit rot. Yeah, man. That I mean, that's just that's him trying to tell you he had money before he came in the game because it's like you got so much money that you forgot you stashed a million dollars. So tell me, when was when was the when was the first time you stashed a million dollars and forgot about it? Like three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found it like a couple weeks ago. Oh man, what'd you think about that? Like for you, how was how how what'd you think that experience was like? From a Dolph perspective, like just it walking there to be like, it was a good day. Anytime you find money, it's a good day. Twenty five dollars, a million, a million would be a crazy day. But then it was like he said it was rotten, so he couldn't use it. I think when he was on the Breakfast Club, though, he did say he was able to salvage some of it, but not as much as it was. But like when you say rot, like, like well, well it started the meal doing stick together and oh, rot through. Yeah, damn, so, I didn't even know that happens. Yeah, it will yes. happen. I need to get my hands on a million. Okay, um, Rich Crack Baby, Mama and Daddy both used to smoke rocks. Rich Crack Baby, now smoking kush with my mom and dad on a yacht. I think that is so beautiful, right? Because when you think about, like, uh, your, your mom and your dad smoking crack, something that can destroy their life, and something that had them in the worst environment, the worst situation, you probably just sitting back smoking with them like, man... They used to smoke crack. Now they smoking weed, something that's manageable, something that's great, and chilling on a yacht. Chilling on a yacht, like no, not a care in the world. It's not happy memories, but it's like, damn, we made it past that. Right. Okay. Um. Same hood. Fuck my mom and dad up. I made a million off that block. Yeah, I stay into. Yeah, I stay into it with that nigga, but this hustling shit come from my pops. And I, well, you know, I think that's self-explanatory too. It's just like, man, the same block that fucked them up, I was able to go to that block and do something different and make something out of myself. And even though I don't like the man that my pops was and I get into it with him because he wasn't a, a good role model or a role or, or a figure, um, I got to understand that the traits that made me, made him a bad person or, or um, not a bad person, but a person who was addicted, it made me a person who can hustle and get them out of that situation. Yeah. So the things that tore him down, I used to help build us up. 
Um, you gave me a hard life, but I ain't tripping though, cause it made me a star. Pull up at the club, not a bar. Yeah, and I don't even drink. I drink raw. Did yeah, you read that right? yeah, yeah. Okay. You did. <laughs> yeah. So basically, that's just him. Like, he um actually. So what he's saying is like he ain't pulling up to the club. He pulling up to a juice bar, cause you know they they drink like uh I forgot exactly what it's called, but it is called raw. But it's like juicing. Okay. Yeah, so I guess he just saying he different from the rest of these rappers. That's how I interpret that. Like y'all pulling up to the club to throw money and drink liquor, nigga. I'm well, pulling up I'm to at like the a juice juicer. Bar. Yeah, <laughs> like nigga, I'm pulling up here to get my body and my life in order. Okay. Came here with a check on these bitches. You know I'm a flex on these bitches. Blue rocks from my neck on these bitches. Blue racks, I'm obsessed with these bitches. VVS, they biting their vicious. Blue Rolly cost me 150. Sliding Dolo with my 30 with, with me and, and my, my chocolate, chocolate bitch, my Hershey's, Hershey's kisses. kisses. Yeah, man, I like that one, right? Because he basically was just like, he was just saying like he obsessed with money. Like basically saying I'm gonna get money. And then he also saying why he get money. Like, yo, when I'm rolling around, I'm protected. And then... I like the other part because he, he shouted out like his baby mama. You know what I'm saying? He say, uh, my he chocolate bitch with, with me. Yeah, that's my Hershey's Kisses. Like, exactly. I'm with my girl. And then I think that was actually a call back to how he was saying, like, yo, these other rappers is, like, in the club throwing money. And I think just to think a little deeper and make it a little more introspective, right? You can look at it from a standpoint like when you go into the club, normally for a rapper, it's the strip club, mm -hmm. right? So you in there like just throwing all this money out on these bitches, getting drunk, blowing a bag. But me, I'm right getting around. my money. I'm riding around. I'm with my lady. I'm spending my money with my family. I'm taking care. So I like that. I like that. That was a good breakdown. Okay. Um, freshest nigga in the whole vicinity. vicinity. <laughs> Fake friends, worse than real enemies. Enemies. Niggas from school, like, remember, remember me? me? What nah. nigga did I sell you some weed? Nah, nigga, did I sell you some weed? Yeah, that was hey, look, that's so funny, right? Because that, re that, uh, I, I bet he was a big pun fan, right? Because that remind me of Big Pun song, It's So Hard, where he was like, I know you from where elementary school, <laughs> nigga, I don't know you. <laughs> you ever heard that song, no. uh, by Big Pun? Okay, what song? it's uh. It's so hard. Big Pond oh, and Darnell Johns. And yeah. Yeah, the little breakdown on that. So that reminds me of that every time I hear it. Because <laughs> then I like that part, too, because, you know, back, like, when you be in the day and you be doing certain stuff or you move a certain type of way, people might just overlook you. Because sometimes when you went to certain activities, teachers would be like, oh, that guy not going to make none of himself. Yeah. And even the people around the area, the parents, whatever's around that, right? And then everybody... They know you for what they know you for, but like normal people will stay away from you. Only the street people interact with you. Mm -hmm. And then once you make something to yourself, then people come like, back oh. like, oh man, you remember me? I had fifth period class with you. Like, nigga, did I sell you some weed, nigga? Cause I don't know you, <laughs> nigga. We wasn't cool. That type of shit. So I like that. Like he flexing on like y'all, y'all act like y'all didn't know me back then. Don't I don't know you. Yeah. I buy what I want and what I need. Why you spend all that money on jewelry? Even though you was a crack fiend mama, you gave birth to a trap king mama. Yeah, ah. I like I like this line, right? So, uh, just to get a context of it, it's like he be like, uh, I buy what I want and what I need. Why you spend all that money on jewelry? Even though you was a crack fiend mama, you gave birth to a trap king mama. Ha! Like. He got some of the best ad libs, right? So when you look at the standard artists, right, what they do is when they do their lyrics and their song, they'll they'll do the first lyric of whatever it is, and then they add a stack on it. So a stack is basically just taking the last points of emphasis that you want from the bar and putting your vocals directly over it of what you said, right? So, but what it seemed like he do when he record, instead of doing that, he just yell and emphasize yeah. his last word, which is super funny and make it super animated, but it also make it stand out, right? But when you actually get back to this, 
he he's saying like I could buy what I want and what I need, and y'all spending all your money on jewelry. So a lot of people kind of was criticizing Dolph when he first came out, like, oh man, he got all this jewelry, he spent all his money on jewelry, and I think that was him kind of talking to the people who talk about him, the haters and the people who in his business just saying like, yeah, I'm I'm buying what I want and what I need. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm buying jewelry, I'm not buy I'm not spending my last on jewelry. Yeah. You are. So stop criticizing me. And then when he talk about um, his mama being a crack fiend, right? But the same way he talked about his pops, her being a crack fiend actually helped him become the king he was. Because when you look at it, them hard times made yeah. what he became. And what a lot of people don't know about this song is that's his mama playing the piano. Oh, really? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, there it is. That's cold. You gonna always be my trap queen, mama. Damn. I mean, always be my black queen, mama. I love you to death. It is what it is. Shit's so crazy. You look just like my kids. You had me shooting dice when I was six. Then I started smoking before I was 10. You and my daddy, y'all made a trap baby. I've been cutting a lot of these oh, niggas I've out lately. I've been cutting a lot of these niggas out lately. Yeah. Throwing 50 racks, watch them scrippers go crazy. Yeah, man. Look, I like this line too, man. Well, I like the whole song, obviously. But... Um, he break down some of the further trauma and that's what I like, right? Um, when you listen to rap and a lot of times when you listen to rap and I say this a lot, man, a lot of people will tell you to what, right? They'll tell you that they throwing money. They'll tell you that they getting money. They'll tell you that they got bitches. They'll show you that they got cars, jewelry, all oh. that. <laughs> but then when they get down to like the, yeah, we know you got that, but who are you really? What did you come from? What was your struggle? You really don't hear too many rappers putting it in their music mm -hmm. like it's literally like when you think of a lot of rappers you him it's like i was born i start trapping i'm a millionaire or or i was a block star and that it'd be like you ain't go through nothing yeah. between being born and starting trapping. i, I or, feel like some rappers do be putting it in their music but they don't go so in depth i feel like he's getting really like um detailed with it right yeah i can see that too I, that, that's why I told you this this one like I was gonna do major but when I when I thought about it I was like I don't want to just do a song that's simple to break down where we just talking about like I got money I did this yeah. I was like I want something that's like going um not only show how good he is lyrically but also just show that he was deeper than money because when most people like when he passed all you were seeing down twitter was uh preach and hundred shots and get money and it's them songs are basically just about money and the other song is about beef but it, it was more to him than just beef you can even tell in the way he moved the way he interviewed and stuff like that and i think beef is just a product of life you got to take it as it come you can't really run away from that type of stuff as a man okay um right here yeah Yep, that's it. Okay. Uh, no money involved, then I don't got the patience. Just like LeBron can't shit stop me. I was by myself. They was eight beef when they shot me. I smell pussy. I smell pussy. Sitting, Sitting in, in a Rolls Royce, Royce smoking, smoking a blunt of cookies. cookies. I, I woke up this morning and put on all Chanel. I still got my plug in standby on the scale. That I mean, that was so cold right there. I like, I ain't gonna even lie, man. I, every time I hear that, like if I'm at the gym and I'm lifting weights and I hear that, it just be like, <laughs> it, it give you that extra Push. energy. Yeah, because when you think about it, right? And not to focus on the beef part of it, but as a man, and I can relate to this, cause when I move around, I move around a lot by myself, no matter where I'm doing, where I'm at. I'm not like a person you will see with like a hundred people all the time. Like if we have an event to go through or something, yeah, my guys will be with me, but for the most, I'm by myself when I move around. Mm -hmm. So when you by yourself, that just show a different level of, some people could say arrogance, some people could say um, stupidness or whatever they want to say. But it's just like, when you a certain type of way and you a certain person, you don't be feeling like, oh, I need to call my homies up so I can run to the gas station or I'm finna, yeah, we finna meet up here. So, you know, you come ride with me here. You just like, 
he he told a story about how he got shot and he basically was just sitting in the car and his guys was like, yeah, we finna go get something to eat. I'm gonna stay here with you. He was like, nah, man, y'all go get something to eat. I'm gonna just sit here and finish smoking. Yeah. And then, so he said what ended up happening, he was like, man, fuck it. I'm finna run upstairs to the hotel room. And he said when he got out the car, that's when he seen the other people he was into it with and they got into a fight. And then that's when he got shot that first time. So it was just like, it's like, damn, like he's he like, by himself. yeah. And that's what he's, that's why he's saying like, I smell pussy. Yeah. I smell pussy. But on the other hand too, you have to look at it. Like <laughs> it sounds crazy or it might be like funny, but when you buy your, if, if somebody by themselves and you got problems with them and your homies with you, they gonna help you jump them regardless. So it's kind of like a double, like if the situation was flipped, his homies probably would have jumped them too. But I think what he said, the pussy part was that was just like, yo, y'all ain't, y'all didn't have to shoot me. Like, yeah. nigga, y'all, it was 80 y'all. Y'all could, if y'all was really, um, if y'all was really on what y'all was on, y'all could have just beat me up real yeah. bad. But y'all ain't do shit really. So I think that was kind of like a taunt to him too. And actually, he said that too, because he said sitting in there smoking a blunt of cookie, that's actually what he was doing. And then he said he had woke up that morning. Then, you know, he's stunning on him again. And then he was basically just saying, like, nigga, I'm a rapper, but I also still got my plug and my skill. So, you know, I'm a trap. That's where I come from. That's I still got my plug on standby and my skill. I still got my plug on standby and my skill. Hot, yeah. Three-tone chain, two-tone watch, two-tone drop. Oh, my God, he too hot. He, he too, too hot. hot. I stashed a million, forgot all about it. Let, let the shit rot. rot. Rich crack baby. Mama and daddy both used to smoke rocks. rocks. Rich crack baby, now I'm smoking kush with my mom. Yacht. Dad on a yacht. Same hood, fuck my mom and dad up. I made a million, million off, off of that, that block. block. Yeah, I stay into it with that nigga, but this hustle shit, shit come, come from, from my pops. pops. You gave me a hard life, but I ain't tripping Cause though. Because it, it made me a star. Hard. Yeah, man. And I mean, he basically just reiterating what he said at the beginning. And I think he brought that back because it was just important to him. Like, just to say like, yo, I went through all this, but now I'm winning. And I think that's important in life. If y'all don't get nothing else from this, right? Um, I want y'all to take that from it. That no matter what you go through, it's on you to figure a way out of that situation, whatever the situation is. And I think that's what he trying to get across to everybody who listening yeah. to it. Like you like, can't use your past as an excuse. You can't you use it and you use it to prepare better. yourself. Exactly. And it was like a quick summary of the whole song, honestly. Yeah, man. That. I, I like that song though, man. So that's that's Young Dolph, Black Queen. Hey man, I appreciate y'all tuning in with us for episode two of Bar Facts, man. We got a chance to break down Young Dolph, Black Queen. That's how he do his last lyric on the line or whatever. But anyway, man, tell them where they can find you at. Um, you can find me on Twitter or TikTok, Nathy Jane, N-A-T-I underscore Jane. Going crazy on TikTok too. So y'all got to tune in with that, man. Appreciate y'all coming through. Y'all know y'all can find me, uh, Fairplay underscore 2333, everywhere. Young Dolph, Black Queen. Ha.